had the ability to love and be kind. You had the ability to produce his fruit. Kindness, gentleness, nurturing. Some people, and this, you know, like Balak, I couldn't believe in God's word, or the sac, because I'm doing all these sacrifices. And, and some people will load their house full of guns and, and ammunition and join the army. And the sad piece is, it's not to protect you. It's not to give you freedom. It's not to protect your rights. It's because they can't believe in God. You, you go to the, you know, we know murder is wrong, right? We all know murder is wrong. And why do we know murder is wrong? Because murderers go to prison. But we go to prison and you can talk to any murderer out there and, and what they're going to tell you is, I lost my patience. I, I lost my ability to, to endure, to be patient. And so I took it upon myself to forcefully make something happen. You know. The reason I got a house full of guns and ammo is you guys are wicked. And I'm going to sit back and wait for you wicked people to come to my door. And when you wicked people come to my door, I'm going to blow you away. That is wickedness in your own heart. To, to believe that, that everybody is wicked and waiting to, to devour you. It's coming from yourself. I, I'm judging them wicked because truly, I know they're wicked because I know how they think. And I know how they think because I'm one of them. I, I, I look and I, I see the glory of God's creation. And there's no wickedness because if Jesus removes all sin, then, then I'm going to believe Jesus. I'm not even going to judge myself worthy or righteous. I'm just going to believe Him who said, I am sin free. I am free to, to live apart from sin. Do we believe it? See, Balak had the stumbling stone of all these sacrifices, and what he found out in providing all these sacrifices, the more sacrifices he made, the less he felt sin-free, the less he believed in God's blessings, and the less he believed in God's love. God is, is love. And that's what Balaam says is, well, I can't speak against God's word, but, you know, I can trick them. And how I can trick them is making them feel unworthy. Here, create a sacrifice. Create an offering. All right? And go to Lent and participate in Lent in, in, in 20 days when, when you fail Lent. And you come hungry because, you know, all food has been blessed by God. Okay, I'm going to stop eating food because I want to fast. What is fast? I'm going to fast from the blessings of God. <laughs> right? Jesus says, fast from your sins. Not the food. The food isn't your sin. It's our unbelief in, in God's grace and mercy. Where does the unbelief in God's grace and mercy come from? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. He also, you know, he's building altars. Twelve, you know, altars. Or, or seven altars. We, we see in Jesus, in twelves. Elijah used twelve for one for each tribe. One for each tribe. So, so the last thing Balaam says... Is he has a, a, his last oracle, he, he goes and he curses a couple of the tribes of Israel and the seed of Seth. Seed of, of Seth, the, the promise of God. In seeds, and that's the thing, it's always said seed. Not seeds of many people, but seed. That the seed of Jesus Christ, the promise of Jesus Christ. 
that, 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 that one day all the earth would be blessed through the seed of Seth. And we see Noah, and all the earth was blessed because of Noah, because had it not been for Noah and those eight people, nothing would have survived. Nothing. We come back to here. Had none of this word would have came fulfilled, had it not been for the seed of David. God's promise being fulfilled through a Moabite. Through a Moabite. Why couldn't he curse Israel, his enemies? Because they were not his enemies. How, how does your son become the king of Israel? Not the enemy. Okay, the promise of David and Jesus Christ is everybody who believes in Jesus Christ one day will sit on the throne of God. Just like David. Just like his sons. And the promise is that every son of David shall sit on, on the throne of God. He's telling them all, right? I can't curse them because if I curse them, you have no chance to sit on that throne. And that's what Jesus is saying. <laughs> don't, 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 don't think that there's a sacrifice to be made. The, the, the grace of God is an eternal blessing. And, and, and it wasn't your will. It wasn't your faithfulness. It wasn't your goodness that, that gave you God's grace. It was the pleasing love of God to do that for you. To do that for you. So let me say, as it's tricky, and, and we hear it today, I'm going to tell you exactly what you want to hear. But, but the part is, I don't want to tell you the whole truth. <laughs> and that's what Bela did. He told them exactly what they wanted to hear, the Israelites, and he's trying to create a curse for them, and the curse was believing you needed to perform a sacrifice to talk to God. And Moses said, hey, God hates sacrifices, just so you know, right? And so as soon as Moses hears about it, he goes to destroy them. Not all the Moabites, but all those who worshipped Baal of Baor, who were beginning to, to practice this sacrifice in order to have a connection with God. Because in the end, Balak believed he, he was out. Out. No chance for, for life. He, he believed that because he kept blessing the Israelites, they were going to come and, and take over Moab and the Moabites. But it was God's grace to graft them into the kingdom so that a, a child of the Moabites would sit on his throne. Same for us. Same for us. It's a wonderful read. I, I like this read. So he goes on to say, all right, brings him up and he says, all right, stand here and make a burnt offering and we're going to seven rams and seven bulls, seven altars, and they burn them and okay, Balak, stand right there next to your offering. And all the, everything you burned up and your offering. And that's what Paul was saying, you know, is the, for the circumcised or the uncircumcised. Let me circumcise you. And then you stand next to the altar. And so there he's standing there, all clean and pretty, because he sacrificed smoking. And I gave up smoking so I can be righteous to God. I gave up drinking so I could be righteous to God. I gave up all these bad behaviors so I could be righteous to God. And here I am. No, 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 no. Bless me. Okay, I can't speak against God's word. I'm going to bless them. Why? I did everything you told me, you know. I, very religious, very clean. I gave up everything, sacrificed all this stuff, and, and you're blessing them. 
Yeah. yeah. Everybody who blesses them will be blessed. And everybody who curses them will be cursed. <laughs> For your sake, I'm going to bless them. So, so that your son can consider on that throne. You know. So let's see what he says. Now he says the word from, and here we are, chapters 23, verse 7. And Balaam took up his discourse and said, From Aram, Balak has brought me. The king of Moab from the eastern mountains, come, curse Jacob for me, and come, denounce Israel. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced. For from the top of the crags I see him, from the hills I behold him. Behold, a people dwelling alone and not counting itself among the nations. And so now he's basically saying to, to Moab, okay, you're trying to exclude yourself from the nations. You're trying to exclude yourself from Israel, <laughs> from the blessing. You're setting yourself apart, falling from grace. Okay, so so when we begin to set up titles and divisions of church and all the holy, holy church on earth is the Catholic church. Here's the warning against that. All right? Because God plays no favoritism. And if all humans are in and under the curse, then aren't we also destined to the blessing? See, by one man we all sin, and by one man we all have life. <laughs> now, whether we believe it or not, if you believe it, that life lives in you. If you don't believe it, you're going to live under the judgment of God, but that doesn't take away from the truth. It's still the truth. It's still the truth. And that's what Jesus is saying in the book of Revelations. The truth is the truth. Yeah, you're saved, but, but why does life suck? Why, why are you having problems? Why are you depressed? And the truth is there is a consequence behind sin. There's a consequence. And, that, and, that, and you get what you deserve. You cheat on your husband, and you're going to have weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Okay, the, 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 there's a consequence behind sin. You, you murder, and you're going to spend 20 years of your life in prison. There's a consequence behind sin. And the good news is uh, that Jesus Christ says, everybody who receives the punishment of sin here on earth will receive the blessing of God because God punishes those who whom he loves. Jesus Christ says, this is what I, I'm going to show you. It is by faith and faith alone. And it is grace and grace alone. And, and this wasn't your faith. This was his faith. It, it doesn't matter if you believe that, that you are my son. I know the truth. I am your father. And, and there's nothing can take you away from that truth. No sacrifice can be made to, to convince God that you are his son. He, he believes it because he was faithful enough to create you. And that's why he believes it. And we're going to convince God that he, we're your son. And he's saying, yeah, I don't need a sacrifice to be made for you to convince to me that you're my son because I am God, the father who made you. I knitted you in your mama's womb, and you're going to convince me I'm, you're my son? Of course you're my son. I'm your father, and I made you. And that's why you're my son. Not because you performed sacrifices. Not because you stopped sinning. But because it was my good pleasure to make you. That's why you're my son. And there's nothing can take that away. Even in the book of Revelations, we see nothing, not even the fire of hell, can take away the truth. You're his son. And you exist because 
He lives. See you next time.